Hello, this is Tom Klepper and welcome to Part D video where we're going to take the Bias T uh, network and uh, convert it to HFSS 3D layout. So if we go back to our Nexum circuit simulation and we go to the layout, here we've done all the hard work in setting up the, the design with a printed circuit board and all the right layers and everything's parametrically defined and that will make things a lot easier moving forward. So now, once that's all done, it's very easy to convert to 3D layout. You just uh, highlight just the circuit portion. Okay, go to here to edit and say uh, copy to HFSS 3D layout. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. And then what we're going to do is set up uh, some parameters in HFSS 3D layout. So this is an electromagnetic planar solver. It does a, f a finite element. Let's go ahead and uh, rename this to uh, D colon bias T HFSS 3D layout. Okay. All right. So we have to set up a couple things. Um, again, if you remember, uh, <clears throat> we set this up with arbitrary dimensions. Your, your circuit's going to look a lot different than this. It, it will most likely want to be a rectangular printed cir circuit board that you're going to make. I think you're going to use the same procedure I said. You're going to have to kind of guesstimate what the lengths of the, the edges are, but you're going to derive that based off of how your circuit traces are. Um, so let's verify that, yes, indeed, the stack up layer came over. Yes, that's right. We have our um, different layers. Yep, they're all there, so that's great. So that all transferred fine. Uh, next thing we're going to check is um, something called the HFSS extents. Ah, no, we're not going to do that first. We're going to right click and go select, select edges, and we're going to apply ports first. So you're going to select the edge of this uh, microstrip. Um, trace the port and go port create and do the same thing over here first click right click and say port create so you've selected uh, port 2 edge and port 1 edge and we're going to then just take a quick peek of it so now we're in a 3d element I'm going to go ahead and rotate this and kind of show you things in 3d so our ports are shown as gap ports where the current's injected along this edge and it goes between here and the ground plane on both sides. And that's fine, but what we really want to do is something called a wave port. So let's go to our project here and we now have two excitations. Click port 1, down to HFSS type and say wave port, and then port 2, uh, wave port. And so since these are microstrip uh, transmission lines, um, this bigger area will capture all the fringing fields and make a much better approximation to the port when we launch into port one and we exit out of port two. So now we have our ports defined. Now let's go to uh, HFSS extents. You have to put uh, an air box. So this defines the dimensions of this air box that goes around your whole project. Let's go ahead and leave the defaults for now, but let's take a look at it. So you have to say show. Now sometimes this does not show up, which means you have to close all your windows and open them again. It's just some bug in the video that the guy from ANSYS told me about. Um, oh, layout, rotate. So now you can see this air box that the whole project exists in. So this is in vacuum and each one of these edges uh, is defined of, of, as a, like a perfectly matched boundary condition. And so this just kind of gives you an idea of what the um, simulation space is. So you can hide that. Let's go back to top view and control D. All right, so we have our ports. Uh, we need to add uh, an analysis. So there's this cosim, but we want to click on analysis, right click and say uh, add HFSS solution setup, say advanced. So 5 gigahertz is fine because we're only going to 4. Change this to 20 and 0 0.02. And then uh, 10 megahertz 
Ah. Cancel. Let's try this again. Add frequency sweep. 10 megahertz to 4 gigahertz and 10 megahertz steps. All right, so now we have our setup along with our frequency sweep. So one thing we are going to do, I wanted to show you this is kind of neat. Um, if you click on uh, the setup, right click and go generate mesh, it'll generate an initial mesh that you can look at. And you, the one reason you want to do this is just to make sure that it is in fact capturing all the metal layers the way you want them, the dielectric layers. This will show you the simulation space and the finite element uh, meshes. So it kind of gives a, a good check. So you go down here to field overlays, right click and say plot mesh, define an initial plot. So let's look at the top layer first. And so you can definitely see those are the traces on the top layer. It's actually going to mesh up and it shows you that initial mess. So you go, yep, that's about right. Uh, you can click on the mesh one plot, right click and go reassign and uncheck that, uncheck that, look at the FR4 layer, and just to make sure, yep, if that's what you're looking to do, so it can, meshes up the volume of the FR4 dielectric layer, and then right uh, click, right click, and go reassign, and let's take a look at the bottom ground plane. Again, just to make sure everything is copacetic, and there is the mesh for the bottom ground plane. So you go, yep, that looks pretty good. So right click and just say, just turn off the visibility, plot, top, we're back to where we are. So we are now, I believe, ready to simulate. Um, one thing else I'm going to do, um, which will be important later on, is click on the project, right click, go down to design settings, HFSS meshing methods, methods and uncheck this enable design level intersection checks. That'll be important later on. All right, so last time I did this, it crashed the software. I'm going to hit save, and hopefully it doesn't crash at this time. Cross your fingers. So it looks pretty good. All right, so I think now we are ready to actually do the simulation. So we have two ports to find. We have all of our geometries. And so I'm going to start the simulation and probably pause the video while it's doing it. Um, so we can go ahead and just before we do it, let's go ahead and do a validation check. Just to be sure, it says yes, it's fine. Um, so, all right, so click on setup, right click, and go analyze. And so it is going to go through and um, go start the progress. You can kind of see what's happening right here. Now, this will take several minutes. It could take a few minutes. So, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and come back when it is finished. Okay, it is finished uh, solving. So we can go ahead and plot the response. So we go down here to results, just like we do before. Click on, say, add a standard report. We're looking at S11, and we're going to look at S21 as well. Add trace, and what do we have? Okay, looks pretty good. Looks pretty similar to what we had before. We had our dip and our peak, but notice it's not at 3 gigahertz. It's a little bit lower. And the reason is because this is an actual field simulation. So um, that you know the, your, the difference is you, this is solving it using the finite element method where before was just a simple circuit uh, parametric approximation. So if we wanted to make this true we're going to have to do a, um, another optimization but we're going to do it in HFSS. So if you uh, click on this and right click and go to um, design properties like we had before you're going to see a couple of things that are significantly different now. Let me click on local variables. Now, what do you see? So we have all of our variables we set up, right? But then all of a sudden you're gonna see a whole bunch more. So this is what HFSS 3D layout set up to parametrically define the entire project. Okay, so it's doing that so that when you make changes that it doesn't set the whole thing off, that it's still, everything's all related to each other, which is kind of nice. So what we're gonna do is Go to optimization. Now, ironically, our optimization constraints are still from, from the last one. And we'll probably keep the same concept, stub one and stub two. <clears throat> and 
and their 562 hive states probably wouldn't need to tweak it much. So we'll go ahead and leave those same constraints. So I'd say they're pretty good. Say okay. All right. Uh, we're going to define an optimization. Um, add optimization. Do the same kind of thing. Probably stick with S21, or we could we could probably do uh, ST2. Let's just stick with this form for now. We're going to add calculation. Uh, we're going to say we're going to do this at uh, select value of 3 gigahertz. All right, where's 3 gigahertz? And then condition maximize. All right, so we are ready to go. However, actually, I'm going to say this again. <laughs> I'm getting paranoid. Um, we don't need to do the whole sweep. We really need to focus on a little bit of this. So I'm going to change this from 2 to 4 gigahertz. And I'm going to drop the number of points because um, I don't want it to take so long. So I'm going to go back to the sweep. And let's just say, let's start this at 2 gigahertz to 4. And now it's dropped to 201. So let's change this to 20 megahertz. So now it's only having to solve 101 points. That's going to help. Um, go ahead and do this again. I like to just validation check. And let's go ahead and run the simulation. So we're hoping that it's going to optimize this over to here. So this will definitely take a while. So when I start it, um, I'm going to, again, pause the video and hopefully be back to you if it doesn't crash the computer. So analyze and let me pause the computer. Let me pause the video. Well, hello, we're back and uh, I had to stop the, the uh, simulation because it was taking too long and it's after midnight. But uh, I will let you know how it turned out in the next video. i uh, just let you know the way I started it uh, was incorrect before I started the video. So you click on optimization and right click and say analyze. That's how you start the optimization. But I'm just going to end the video now and then uh, pick it up in the next video where we're going to go over essentially how to add the connectors and the pads on and do the final simulation. So that will be it for now and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.